This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 35 of Horsemanship Radio, brought to you by Index Fund Advisors, IFA.com. Horsemanship Radio is part of the family of the Horse Radio Network. In the depths of a record cold winter, we want to set our sights on the thaw. So join us today from the sunshine state of California today to talk to a couple of guys who help people prepare for a happy life with horses. This is Debbie Laux, and you're listening to the Horsemanship Radio. Thank you for joining us today. Horsemanship Radio airs on the 15th and the 30th of each month, and I have my producer, Jen, with me today. Hey, how cold is it in Florida today? It's a frigid 72 in Florida today. Oh. <laughs> not too bad. So maybe complaining about the weather is not going to be a big thing today for us. But I know that the, the whole nation's really, the Northeast and across the Midwest is just wrapped in a freeze right now, right? And I even heard you guys, I, I listen to Horse Radio Network too, and I heard you guys got a little down there below the freezing line a couple it of times. It did. For about a week, we had regular temperatures right around the freezing mark. And for mm-hmm. Ocala, Florida, that is pretty darn chilly. Unfair. A yeah. little unfair. P.T. Scooter <laughs> had just gotten a haircut, yeah. and we, <laughs> we shaved off his entire coat because he's a little bit like a grizzly bear. And uh, he was a little, he was a little miffed with us. <laughs> shaking at you. Yeah, I know. It's cold everywhere. So we thought, well, gosh, let's do, do a little midwinter planning. So we, we want to look forward to spring. We don't, we don't want to think about this cold so much. So we needed to set our sights on a couple of things. And that's what we're going to do today. We've got um, lots to talk about with um, Mark Hebner. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that conversation because just like we plan our competition schedule for the year well in advance when we're showing our horses, Mark, who is a horse guy, is a real pro at uh, helping folks with their financial future, and he's going to enlighten us a little bit on how us horse folks can do a better job of it. He is one of the best horse owners I've ever met for as, uh, as a student and putting professionals around him. So, you know, we could take a, a lesson or two uh, from, from him to put good people, good sound advice around us, too, and uh, make sure that we are doing for the best for our horses, not just listening to the lady in the stall next to us at the equestrian <laughs> center <laughs> tell us the latest tip, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, then, yeah. <laughs> make sure these things are really vetted out. So it's going to be fun today. And then we've got Monty Roberts. We've got my dad here today, too, and he's getting ready for a gigantic tour right now, too. So he's getting in shape, and he's talking about, um, oh, how we we should judge maybe the horse size to our size and how we can get in shape and be a better um, rider for our horses as well. Um, so something we can do in these winter months when we are pretty shut in. We don't want to pack it on. We want to plan it off. So this, we're going to be talking about All kinds of planning. Bit. Planning for mm-hmm. our spring fitness, spring right. planning for our financial future. It's all That's about right. planning. It is. There's nothing else to do in this big cold that's <laughs> going on. <laughs> so we're going to do that. Polar vortex. We're gonna do that today. Polar vortex. Boy, I've been hearing that a lot lately, huh? Not about mo- global warming too much. Not a lot <laughs> this year. No. I haven't been hearing about Not that. Not been one, in the but. headlines. So we'll get started with this show after this word from IFA.com. Hi, I'm Mark Hebner, president of Index Fund Advisors and proud owner of Monty Roberts Willing Partners graduate, He's a Sugar Bear. (laughs) You know, investment portfolios are a lot like horses. You need to find one that best suits you, your temperament and your stage of life. Some people might like an energetic horse and an aggressive investment portfolio, while others are more comfortable with a gentle ride and a more conservative investment portfolio. The trick is to find the one that's right for you. That's what Index Fund Advisors is all about, matching people with portfolios, risk-appropriate, low-cost, and globally diversified investment portfolios. You can find the right portfolio for you by taking the Risk Capacity Survey at ifa.com. That's IFA as an Index Fund Advisors. Or you can call us toll-free at 888-643-3133. That's 
888-643-3133. Mark Hebner is founder and president of Index Fund Advisors. He is an author of a highly recognized book called Index Funds, the 12-Step Recovery Program for Active Investors. <laughs> And he's a respected speaker, news contributor, and he's an authority provider of information and education on investing. Mark's mission is to change the way that the world invests by replacing speculation with education. And he takes the mystery out of investing for me. I, he is especially knowledgeable about index funds. He'll talk to you about that. And passive investing and, and researching indexes designed by Nobel laureates like Eugene Fama and Kenneth French. And that provides the building blocks to the prudent investment strategy that he recommends to investors. Um, Mark's a wealth advisor, a Series 65, real important stuff. And he has a master's in business administration from the University of California at Irvine and a Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy from the University of New Mexico with a specialization in nuclear pharmacy. Can you believe that? And near and dear to our hearts, though, he is the owner of He's a Sugar Bear, a beautiful paint gelding that he rides in Cota de Casa, California. Welcome, Mark Hebner. I'm so excited to have you on. This is your first trip on Horsemanship Radio. Am I right? It is. And I'm what? excited, too. Good, good. We do recognize your voice because for full disclosure, you are our title sponsor with IFA.com. But that's not why we have you on today. We're proud of all the work you've done with IFA. The thing that I find so interesting about you is that you've had a lot of different careers and uh, you've done different things. But why, why horses for you? Well, so the first thing that attracts me to horsemanship is it gives me an opportunity to relax. I er, have a very busy kind of hurried life uh, during my work hours and, and these, uh, these days of uh, iPhones and, and iPads laying around, it seems like you never stop working. Mm -hmm. And my time on my horse gives me uh, that break when uh, I can kind of clear my head of all those things. And I've come to sort of crave those, those sort of peaceful moments. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. Number two is it gives me a great activity to do with my wife uh, where we can be together and uh, enjoy each other's company, enjoy the company of our horses, mm -hmm. and just go for a nice walk around the 40 miles of trails at Kodo mm -hmm. and uh, just, just have a great time together. That's wonderful. So, yeah, and Beth Hebner, we'll put a plug in for her and her horse, Inferno, Concord Inferno, yes. um, and you and Bear, or he's a sugar bear, who we all know, and his Winnie, too. Um, you can hear his Winnie, yeah. <laughs> you can hear his Winnie. And, and, we need uh, to redo that one of these days. Go ahead. It's time. <laughs> Let's retool that guy. Um, but it is a beautiful scene to see you guys out there. You often text me uh, right out of the tack room. Uh, I'm relaxing yeah. in my tack room. And it is wonderful here. So I'm, I'm curious, what advice could you give wives and girlfriends who, who want their partners to love horses too? What, what would you say that they could think about doing? Hmm. Well, they could watch a bunch of old westerns. That's kind of fun <laughs> to get you going. I, I heard your dad even does that still he after does. all these years. He does. Um, I don't know. I guess I, I guess the main thing is, is you know I got a lot of positive feedback uh, from my wife. You know, it's funny. I, I've heard that a lot of guys are afraid of the horse, and so you know maybe that's the other thing. I think maybe uh, sort of the male perspective is to kind of, you know, wrestle and force that horse to do what you want it to do. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that makes it uh, difficult. Um, but it's funny, I've, I've been running companies since I was 22, and I'm 62 now. And uh, you get a lot more out of employees uh, being gentle and working with them rather than forcing the issue, and, and it's the same thing with a horse. And in many ways, my working with the horse – uh, I think has made me a better uh, manager and made me a little more uh, sympathetic and, and make me listen a little more uh, to my employees. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of benefits uh, for, for men to spend time with horses and um, – I don't know. You haven't called me. We'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> it's so true, though. It is true that um, 
I, I think guys may be a little worried about losing some of that machismo out there around a horse if sure. they, it, yeah, if it's such a woman dominated, um, I don't know, sport these days, even if it's just a recreation. Um, we, what one interesting development that we've had in the last few years is going into South America and seeing what a male dominated world. I mean, we walk into a clinic or a, uh, an event with horses these days. It's, it's right. all women. It's, it's 90% women, right? You go, go to the shows on the weekends. It's a lot yeah. of women and kids. Um, but down there it's the polar opposite. I mean, you see maybe 10% of women involved in horses, but I think they're starting to figure out that they can, um, remain, uh, leaders and machismo like, um, I don't want to say dominators of horses, but they definitely are tougher with horses down there. And they're learning that, hey, that, that little 120 pound, nothing veterinarian woman actually can handle those horses when she's vetting them as easily as the men. And they're starting to pay attention. So I, I think that's great. What you're saying about our, um, the aspects of men being involved in the sport for health reasons too, which I think is a great thing when in this midwinter planting season right now. Um, sure. um, and we want to hear a little bit more about uh, your property too, because you, you've now gotten so much into horses. You didn't just buy them. You're actually bought a piece of property and are starting to build a barn and do some of that too. Catch us up with that. Yeah, we're actually getting, Really excited. Yesterday, uh, John Blackburn, who you interviewed on a previous show, uh, uh, got us, or we received from John some really nice barn drawings. Mm-hmm. And we're, we finally got something that we can send to our homeowners association. And then we've, we've uh, recently completed our grading plan. One of our problems with our yard is it's got a pretty steep uh, slope across the backyard. Mm-hmm. And we've got about an acre back there that we're trying to turn into our little horse facility with a round pen and a barn and a pasture. And I actually sent you a, a little sh- a picture of it as well. It looks but, great. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun planning this. And uh, we're, we're, I was looking at the backyard this morning, finally envisioning the barn and where it was sitting. Mm-hmm. And a couple of weekends ago, I actually went out and put some stakes in the ground. And so I could nice. see, you know, what it would look like and, so we're we're very anxious uh, to a point in time where we'll get up in the morning and go out and feed our horses. Oh, great. That is such a privilege. Yeah. And it, there's a lot of listeners who I know probably have that situation, but there's a lot more that would rather have it. And uh, yeah. we, we love following your story with that, that, that passing from horse ownership to actually living with your horses is a huge step. It's a huge responsibility and everything, too. It is. And that actually has me a little concerned, but uh, we're, we're up for the challenge. You're a good student. No, you're a good student. You've got lots of good resources in, at your disposal, too. So one thing that I, I definitely wanted to get your knowledge out today to the listeners is wealth strategies. I mean, anybody who has horses either says, I'm broke because I have horses or I have to overwhelm it with income <laughs> because I want horses. And, right. and yeah, that's, that's your business. And we want to know a little bit more about how we can um, – save our money, how we can grow our money. We all need money. That's the one common denominator with horses and horse owners is we need money to feed them and keep them. Yeah. Any, any tips for us in that, Mark? Well, you know, it's interesting. About 5,000 years ago, uh, 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 one of the wealthiest men in Babylon wrote a book that still holds up today. And in that book, he basically stated, you need to take a part of what you earn and put it aside for yourself. So roughly 10% of what everybody earns should be stashed away for the day when your human capital will no longer earn you money. So what does that mean? So basically, you have two sources of earning money. One is your own time, which we call your human capital. You apply your skills and your labor and your time. But it's sooner or later, uh, the world, nobody in the world wants to pay you for that human capital. So now you have to rely on another source of income, which is your financial capital. Mm-hmm. So basically, your life breaks down into a human capital phase and a financial capital phase as earning. And if you don't save 10% of what you're earning, when it comes time to live off of your financial capital, mm-hmm. you don't have any. And so 
it's probably one of the most important lessons people can learn is that they should be setting aside roughly 10% of their paycheck at all times into some kind of a retirement account, uh, either their IRA or their 401k or even just a brokerage account. And they then stash that money away in uh, the optimal portfolio really is that uh, – that putting this funds and what we call index funds in globally diversified exposure to capitalism all over the world. And that's in essence what you get with a portfolio of index funds. We typically put clients in about 15 different index funds, some for stocks and some for bonds. And in that portfolio, they end up with about 13,000 companies and 600 different bond issues. And so at that point, you're not really worried about some company going out of business or one company outperforming the other. In essence, you're capturing the returns of capitalism. And over the long haul, the returns earned in capitalism exceed just about every other investment. And they're in the vicinity of about 10% a year. Mm. If you do it properly, you keep your fees low. And there's no need to pick stocks or pick the times or try to select managers and do all the kind of nonsense, as we call it, of of, Mm -hmm. uh, people basically trying to weave in and out of the market. All they need to do is own the market. Uh, The market gives a great return, and you can do that at a very low cost, very low taxes in this method of investing. If anybody wants to learn more about it, uh, we've got a website full of information at ifa.com. And I urge you to go out there and figure it out. And so when you invest this way, the really the determinant of your return is how much risk you take. It's not mm-hmm. how well you did in speculation uh, because a high-risk portfolio has earned you know, a certain return. And on our scale, it's about 12.5% over the last 50 mm-hmm. years annualized. And then there's a low-risk portfolio that's earned maybe 5%. And the way that you can sort of control your risk and return is to focus on how much risk is right for you. And as, as I say in my ad at the beginning of each show, there's a little survey you can take. There's a five-question survey or a 25-question survey. You answer those questions, and it helps you identify basically the risk-appropriate portfolio for each investor. Mm-hmm. And there's a quick overview, and but we've got a whole bunch of videos. We've got over 400 videos and 1,200 articles if you really want to dig into all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you want some help, just give me a call. I'd be happy to help uh, uh, any of you who need help. And even if you don't have a lot of money in, to invest uh, because you're a horse friend, I'd be mm-hmm. happy to spend some time in helping people uh, set up accounts or, or even do this on their own. That's great. So the big faith walk is putting aside the money a little bit, right? That's, the 10%. Well, if you don't have money to invest, you certainly can't yeah. get a return. That's <laughs> exactly. right. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the next faith, faith walk that you have to do there. And then it, it, does it depend a little bit? Your risk is going to depend on a little bit or where you are in age category and, and part of life too, right? That's right. So we, we have this survey where we actually measure – what we, we assign a value, really, to your five dimensions of risk capacity. And so, in essence, uh, that's how much time you have before you need the money, what your current net worth is, what your current income is, your general attitude, mostly towards losses in short periods. And then lastly, we, we try to get some assessment of your understanding how markets work, of how markets work. And then, so we assign a value to each one of your answers. You give about questions in those categories. And then you get a score between one and 100. And there's 100 different investments you could invest in uh, here at IFA. It's just basically an allocation of stocks and bonds from 100% stocks to 0% stocks. And uh, if you score 53 on that survey and we agree on those answers were appropriate for you and blah, 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 then we put you in that portfolio 53 and uh, and then we keep that in balance. We monitor we monitor that portfolio for what are called tax loss harvest opportunities, and uh, we also slowly reduce the risk over time in what we call a glide path strategy. Sorry if that's all a lot of stuff and it's too fast, but <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to give you an overview. It's, it's not good. simple. 
It's good. Okay, so so Jen and I, um, we think of it like this. Uh, it's a little bit like eHarmony for a portfolio. Is that right? You're kind of matching yeah. us up. <laughs> I'm well, sorry. I'm putting well a plug remember, in we, remember in my little you know ad, I talk about matching the horse with the right person. That's right. Um, but also, there is a our, that used to be the tagline for our company: matching oh. people with portfolios. Oh, right. right. We, we're now fiduciary wealth services, which is a whole other issue about a, a fiduciary and a non-fiduciary. Okay. But you're right. Some you basically have to get to the risk level that's just right for you. For you. And yeah. those five factors that I mentioned help you assess the right amount of risk uh, for you at this point in your life. And and that does change over time. Basically, it should reduce just a little bit each year as you get older. Mm-hmm. That's excellent. I mean, that that puts it in perspective where we can even understand that, Mark. And you're right. a smart guy. You're you own horses now, so you're doing it right. You're you've put your money away, and you've uh, been smart about it. And why shouldn't we tap into your um, your smarts and get to work yeah. on on our futures? So so we can take good care of our horses too. And you're exactly right. People probably. Um, make big mistakes in horses just like they might have made in past uh, investments. So we need yep. help. We need to take your hand and and follow somebody <laughs> who's done it before us. So I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And I know that you're full of wealth on horses too because you're a good student. And you and I talk a lot about um, different schools of thoughts, but you have horses first in your mind too whenever you make a decision about either building barns or um, going on the next trail ride or, or anything else. You keep your horses safe and healthy. So what I'd love to do, if you will agree, I'd love to have you back and give us a little tip about what you've learned in these past few years and your experience with horses. Would you do that? I would love to do that. I've learned so much from your father, actually, That's that I'm nice. sure I could come up with a few tips there. Great. Okay. We will have Let's you back. It. Let's do it. Okay. Mark Hebner, thank you again for joining us from IFA today. Um, we're really excited because Sean's Omega Fields company has done something amazing for one of our test horses. His name is Cadillac. And we felt so strongly about it that um, we definitely wanted to bring him on as a sponsor of Horsemanship Radio. And we wanted you to know that it came in that um, order first is that we were so impressed with this product and with this horse's results that we wanted to have him a part of our um, our monthly shows. What is it about the Omega Fields product? Something's different. Omega Fields uh, was built around a really um, unique and proprietary technology. Flaxseed has been known for a long time to contain rich source of omega-3 fatty acids along with omega-6 and omega-9 fatty acids in in a near perfect balance. But historically, there was a problem using it. It's high in fat, and when it was uh, milled into a feed product or a food product, it it would go rancid very quickly. So our company had developed a proprietary technology for stabilizing this high-fat flaxseed to make it usable, uh, give it a long shelf life in a natural uh, environment. We don't use any chemicals or additives to mm-hmm. extend the shelf life or anything like that. It's a completely natural process. That's what makes our flax really different. Um, it makes it usable. It makes it nutritious over a long period of time. We guarantee an 18-month shelf life so consumers can use it with confidence without it going rancid that you know would potentially harm the horse. So quality of manufacture, every single thing in that uh, product, Omega Horse Shine, is food grade. It's made at a food grade facility with great care of product quality. Uh, The stabilization technology makes that uh, Omega-3 nutritional value locked in and usable for a long period of time. So proof is in the pudding, so to speak, that it, it really works. You'll see dramatic results in a fairly short period of time. Monty Roberts, the world champion horse trainer, and my dad, is a doctor of behavioral sciences. He's a featured clinician at lots of shows, and we're proud to have him here to um, share with us his depth of experience across many disciplines. He's won nine world championships with legendary horses such as reigning and cutting champion Johnny Tivio. 
And he was named Stock Horse Man of the Year uh, by his peers in 1987. In the racing industry, he purchased, trained, and sold Alleged, who was twice the Arc de Triomphe winner and a world champion racehorse, along with many more than probably 300 thoroughbred race champions across his uh, career in that, including Lumitas and Silvano in Europe and Kathy Honey and Ala Dancer in the United States. Um, he and, and and my mom, his wife, Pat, were the leading agents for, for about 18 years, selling two-year-olds in training for the racetrack. And he is also known uh, for Shy Boy. His, um, it's a movie and a book and the subject of numerous documentaries seen by millions of uh, people around the world. He is probably, Shy Boy is the most famous Mustang um, probably ever in, in our recorded history. And Monty is an international best-selling author whose book, The Man Who Listens to Horses, has sold more than 5 million copies globally now. And it's an achievement that's just never been seen before in the world of professional horsemen. Uh, his career up to date has included just over, over 2,000 public demonstrations, and these events are held in uh, more than 22 countries, and it involved pro- approximately 10,000 horses at this point. So he is a proven entity. Welcome back, Monty Roberts. How are you today, Dad? Busy. I know you, you know, are. That's Debbie, why I called you. <laughs> it's it's insane. They told me by the time you're 65, you can retire and sit down. 65 was 15 <laughs> years ago. Yeah. And I'm I'm going harder than I ever have gone in my entire life. That's it, a good it's point. fun though. I, I I did some wonderful things today that were really fun. Uh, working with the Ardell uh-huh. um, on a horse that's very challenging, okay. and um, and working with uh, Victor in the arena on some lead changes that I'm I dreamed up in the middle of the night on how to help <laughs> this horse change leads, and. Um, so I, I know that I was a little late for this interview, but it's only because um, I'm creating things that you'll be able to use. And we had about 10 different segments on video today. It's Ooh, really fun. Good. I'm excited. Well, one of the reasons we wanted to have you on today is because everybody, the whole nation really, other than Florida and California, I guess, is in the midst of a w- midwinter blast, this polar vortex everybody keeps talking about. And everybody's going stir crazy. You may be able to work with your horses, but there's so many people out there who are, you know, locked in and throwing hay over the the fence and just feeding their horses like crazy to keep them warm. But we hey. wanted to talk, we, yeah, you know? Debbie, we need rain and it's like July here. I don't tell people that though. They're really anxious right now about spring. <laughs> they don't want to hear that. Even in Florida, it's been cold. So we wanted to talk. We wanted to talk a little bit about discipline and for the for the midwinter. Sometimes we start packing it on a little bit. We get a little inactive, us people, us yeah. riders, and we pack yeah. a little in on winter. And we thought we know you're getting ready for. One, two, three, four, five countries coming up. Arizona, UK, Germany, Hungary, Australia. You've got dates. And China. In, well, you have to fly over it. It's true. <laughs> We're not going to do <laughs> I working with any land horses. in China. The land in China. Not working with horses in China. But what we want to no. talk about, though, is people um, getting in shape for their horses in, and helping their horses in so many ways while they can yeah. right now take the time to get in shape, get healthier, um, for so yeah. many reasons, for their backs, for their joints, for their well being. just being up on yeah. a horse, being, yeah. feeling yeah. secure and core strength. So tell yeah. us a little bit about what you're working on right now to prepare for all those dates. Oh man. You <laughs> know, Debbie, the way I travel, uh, if I'm going to stay in shape, I've got to figure out how to make every hotel room a gymnasium. Most of the hotels that I stay in don't have gymnasiums. They don't no. put me in five-star hotels. But I have learned how to make any hotel room a gymnasium. Okay. And elastic is a good thing. Um, you you study a little bit. Go Go to your sports store and study a little bit the elastic things. They don't weigh anything, so you can put them in the in the bags and take them with you and you do these stretchy exercises, but you can do with bed, uh, clothing. And if you call the maids, they'll bring you extra stuff. If you have some tiny clothesline cord and you can use towels too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can make a, um, a sausage shaped, 
uh, affair about uh, four feet long. That's a little more than a meter long. Okay. Um, and you can put your foot under it and do leg lifts that are just incredibly good for your core strength. But if you if you do have the possibility of getting on a stairmaster or um, a, a treadmill sort of cardio. In, in, in hotels uh-huh. for cardio, yeah, uh-huh. and you can do it in your in your bedroom if you get the cheapest. And actually, if you go to these uh, there these thrift places, nobody uses them after they buy them anyway. But you should, and and get in shape in the winter time, and okay. you can get them for about twenty percent of what they cost the original buyer. Um, a little little uh, treadmills and little stairmasters. The stairmaster is uh, much smaller, can go in the corner of a bedroom very easy, and um, it, 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 Pat uses it a lot. It's really effective. I use the leg lifts on the on the blankets here at home, and I have a, 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 a Australian uh, raincoat that weighs a lot in the core, and then I wrapped a blanket around it. And so I have about a 12-pound sausage, mm-hmm. you know, a little more than a meter long, and I can put my toes under it and then lift straight forward, lying down, um, and I just bounce it, lift, 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 Great. lift, yeah. 20 on this side, 20 on that side, and I do about 800 of those little lifts Ooh. a day. That's yeah, a 800. Lot. It's about only 15 minutes or so you can do 800 of them. And... Um, I just did a record of my push-ups. Okay. And yeah, because I wanted a gift for Satish Simar, who runs the show for Sheikh Mohammed in Dubai. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got me, he really uh, encouraged me while we were in India together. He encouraged me to get this, this um, goal that I have of 80 push-ups at 80. 80 he years encouraged old. me to get it going. I'm 80 years old, yeah. And so the theme of 2015 will be 80 at 80. So I'm going to do for my audiences 80 push-ups at 80 years of age. Awesome. And uh, okay. yeah, what? Awesome. That's great. Yeah. You're inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, <laughs> naturally, if you're going to be sure of it, if you're a professional about it, you're going to know you can do 100 before you say you can do 80. 80. So <laughs> I did 130 in one one session, what, consecutive push-ups for Satish today on video as a gift to him for oh. inspiring me while I was in India. Nice. Um, so I'm, I'm in pretty good shape. Uh, if, if a man at 80 uh, listening to your radio can do 80 push-ups, I want to hear from him. Yeah. I, want, I want him <laughs> to come in to you and, 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 and give you a, a, an email or something and tell you about his 80 at 80. And I might even have to have him send a video because I want it to be for sure. Well, they might have been inspired to do it now. So they, they've got something to yeah. do this winter. Yeah, I get Yeah, it. and when I was in India, Debbie, that was late November, I could only do about 25. Yeah. I was I was maxed out at 25. And, um, and now uh, I'm rolling by 25. That's to warm up. That's a warm up. Is there a time limit to this challenge? Mm, no, Jen, no, 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 no. You can do this, Jen. Okay. <laughs> if, you know, if you're 80 and you take 20 years to do it and you can still keep working on it, then That's you're right. all right. That's right, exactly. Work in progress. Well, I mean, people are going to be looking forward to that. And um, so you're going to be in Camp Verde, Arizona. We'll name these dates on the show notes, too. But you're going to be in England in three spots and Germany in three spots and Hungary over a weekend for a special training. Uh, And you're going to be in Australia in three different cities there, too. So now I I would... I know. Sorry, it makes you tired just thinking about that <laughs> schedule. But but people will be listening to this. Um, this will be posting February 30th. So you know they're in the depths of the winter. And But I want you to inspire them for their horse's needs too now. Um, we we kind of know by January 1, we know that we're supposed to roll around and, and create some more discipline for ourselves as the new year uh, says, it's time to make resolutions. Um, but what about thinking through the lens of your horse? Why is it good to be stronger, more fit, lighter on top of your horse? Tell us all the right reasons. Wow. I mean, think about you carrying your rider around. And um, <laughs> if you look people over, would you choose the one that was hanging out over his belt buckle? Um, and uh, 
you know, didn't have the strength to pull himself up in the saddle and pulled it across your withers and then plopped his big bottom down on the saddle and, and couldn't float over the horse, you wouldn't choose him. Um, and your horses really ought to have somebody that's relatively fit. Now, I'm not talking to the person that's challenged and can't do these exercises. Um, that person can get as fit as they can using the doctor's advice to what you can do. And you can ride your horse at a walk and he might choose you quite uh, effectively. Right. But if you're if you're not challenged physically, then get yourself in shape. It's fun, too. You know, I got uh, shingles the first part of January, and I still have an extreme amount of pain uh, over my right eye and mm -hmm. across the, the right skull right now, right now. But the best I feel is after I do my 110 or so push-ups because there's endorphins there. And so you will feel good after the the exercise i know that's what we all say and we're sitting down there um munching on the the corn chips <laughs> watching a tv show and we can't get it started but yeah. if you if you will if you will get up off that couch and mm -hmm. think about just doing four or five push-ups mm -hmm. after you've done four or five you'll think you know i can get 10 and after you've done 10, you'll say, I think I can get 15. And and get it started. And then you'll be uh, inspired to do more. More. Uh, mm -hmm. I promise you. And mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not a lazy person, but I'm not also one of those naturally gifted lean machines either. Mm -hmm. And so I'm staying pretty fit. And they say, how do you stay young? And I say, 80 at 80. Mm -hmm. And um, you... You can do it, too. And, you know, I heard something the other night, Debbie. I was watching television, and I heard a man say something. It wasn't in the horse angle or genre, but I can put it in the horse thing. And that is, if we blame our horse for doing something we didn't like, mm -hmm. it's like blaming the night for being dark. Ah, right. The horse is just natural. Mm -hmm. He just does natural things. So he is a an image of what we encourage him to do. Right. So don't blame your horse. Look in the mirror, mm -hmm. blame yourself, mm -hmm. and then go fix it. Now, that's a little bit simplistic because it might not be you that caused it. Maybe there's somebody else in the scenario. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Don't blame your horse then. Fix it. And fix it through natural and nonviolent techniques. Uh, it works. Uh, but don't blame the night for being dark and don't blame your horse for being natural. Natural, yeah. They, they are a flight animal. And what they do is completely honest, isn't it? I mean, it, it's us to Absolutely. figure out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Horses cannot lie. They mm -hmm. can't contrive. They don't plan to do anything wrong. They would love to do something right if you make the right things easy and good for them, and the wrong thing's difficult. Mm -hmm. Good. I, I thought of something as you were speaking about getting on and off your horse and, you know, not being quite strong enough yet and not being quite light enough yet, maybe to be completely fair about that. But that frame on a horse, you've changed something that you do getting on a horse now uh, in the last, I don't know, three, four years. It's the I mounting sure block. Have. The mounting block. I Tell sure us have. about that. Mm -hmm. I sure have, Debbie. And, you know, we had mounting blocks when I was a kid for the people that came out of the town that couldn't get up on a horse. There I was. He'd just bounce up on a horse like yeah. a <laughs> ping pong ball, you know. Right. Um, and so I never thought I would ever use mounting blocks. But, you know, at 80, by golly, it's better to use mounting blocks. And you have a mounting block almost anywhere you look. If there's a stump or a stone, uh, even a bank that comes up mm -hmm. higher. Right. If you teach your horse to come to the mounting block, and you can do it. If you go on the online university That's right. uh, that we've created, you'll see how we teach the horses now to come to the mounting block. Whatever it is, a bank, it can be just what gets you higher. 
a bank. I, I was uh, the other day they had a bridge there and they were working and, and then there was some cones and the cone needed to be straightened up and I got off my horse and I thought, no, oh, no, no, get back on. <laughs> yeah. So I just stepped up on this bridge, which was about six inches higher, mm-hmm. but that was good enough. That's enough. And I asked him, I asked him with his cues to move over to it. And he moved over and put this put the stirrup right there in front of me, and I got on and rode off. Yeah. It's it's amazing if you teach your horse to come to the mounting block, it will save so much. And we've got mounting blocks now all over the place because both Pat and I are almost. I'm coming on eighty, and Pat's something younger than me, but I'm yeah. not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> um, but you know, and then we have beginning riders a lot on the place, and we had a night of inspiration recently. Um, with people here, and then we had riding with respect, yeah. and and a lot of people getting on that some had got on a horse three times in their life, mm-hmm. and uh, so the mounting blocks have become a very important object, set of objects around this farm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and uh, you have in those lessons too. I was thinking about all the spots, like the ramp on your trailer, a step upping in a, yep. a trailer. If if your horse comes to you, if you can teach those cues, just about any the bumper yep. of a truck. There's there's yeah. so many things that you you think of once you don't want to climb on that horse anymore, and once you get used to that mounting block, I think your horse gets used to it too. They don't like being pulled over any more than the that's next person. right. He loves it because that pulling the saddle across the wither as you pull your body up the side mm-hmm. of the horse is not comfortable. And if you teach them the comfort of having an elevated person getting on, they love it. And they'll come over there and you give them a rub on the neck and tell them how nice they are. You get on, you take one step back and then you go forward and then you discourage any going forward before you get ready in the saddle. Yeah. They seem calmer about the whole situation too. If they've got an anchor, like a, like a mounting block, you know, it's almost like a place to be as opposed to just out in the yard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to Camp Verde, Arizona and uh, Shorty is down there with her organization and she's going to help us put it on. And uh, we're going to take a willing partner's horse with us and a mounting block. And we will, we will show the people there how we school the horses to come to the mounting block. All right. You're back in the USA. We get those all the time. When's Monty going to come back to the USA and do an event? Well, there it is. Well, there I am. And if you live in Moscow, Idaho, you come to Camp Verde, Arizona on the 14th, (laughs) I think it is, of March. Yep, that's right. And there I'm going to be. So don't be telling me that I don't do them in, in America. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think I think Americans were getting a little bit jealous there, Monty, for a while. <laughs> That's a little bit it. jealous. <laughs> That's right. Well, okay. it's time to join up. All right. So thank you for the tips today. That was a lot of fun, and we're going to look forward to your eighty and eighty check. And we're going to look forward to getting a little, uh, getting our towels out and getting our, you know, excuses now to have a little really exercise clever, equipment. Really Very clever good. travel tips for staying fit. I like really those. good. Maybe we need to do Debbie. Um, uh, a lesson on the uh, vi- on the uh, online university of what I do in a hotel room. Uh, It'd be interesting at yeah. some point. Yeah, Maybe we it would can do that in Arizona. That little surgical tubing. I know you know a lot of gyms anymore have that just little flat piece of. Yeah, let's do it in Arizona. That'll be fun. Let's do. Yeah. Okay. We'll have Don okay. there. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today. We'll add this as our tips too, huh, Jen? Is you is bet. it over already? What the heck? Oh. You, know, you got you know to go on to the next. You have the veteran. You know what I have coming this afternoon in a yeah. few minutes? In the, the military. Tell us. A, a, a group of psychiatrists and lawyers <laughs> that, oh, represent, yeah, that represent a, a man in the Air Force yeah. that's uh, had big problems. And I've been working with him, and his, his uh, life has changed for the better immensely. It's and they're coming story. to find out what the heck I yeah. do with these people that uh, causes them to change so dramatically. Yeah. So this is going to be interesting for me. Yeah, we, we won't tell your secret, but it's horses. Yeah. <laughs> the, init- the initials are horses. <laughs> yeah, and it, it really isn't me. It's just that I've discovered what horses yeah, have to offer human beings that have problems, and basically the problems come down to trust. And uh, trust is what a horse looks for, too. It does. It does. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing today. And we look forward to having you back right after all those dates go by. We'll come do catch up, okay? Okay. God willing, I'll see you then. 
That's right. 80 and 80. That's our cry. Monty Roberts has been using and talking about CoreGem for four years now. CoreGem is one of the leading suppliers of Brazilian killer bee propolis, both in liquid and cream. As horse owners, we want a topical product that provides superior results for girthage, saddle irritation, rain rot, and all fungal issues, even scratches and ringworm. CoreGem does it all. We also want a product that heals wounds fast and minimizes the appearance of scars. CoreGem does that too. And we want it to regrow hair in affected area and reduce skin inflammation, and Corgem does that. Plus, it contains no steroids, antibiotics, or chloride. It is non-toxic. It's even safe when your horses lick it, and we know they will. Used and recommended by veterinarians, breeders, and trainers from all over. Get Corgem today at CorgemAnimals.com. That's C-O-R-I-G-E-M Animals.com. And use the coupon code HRN and 2015 that stands for horse radio network hrn 2015 and get 10% off your next order just because you're a listener to this show that's hrn 2015 at coragemanimals.com this week's trainer's tip comes from judy limsky we remember her and she's going to talk about feeding treats Welcome back, Judy Lemsky, who is full of trainer's tips for us. So we, we, uh, we have a lot of episodes to fill, and we would love to have Judy back for a trainer's tip, and she agreed. So, hi, Judy. How are you? I'm fine. How are you, Debbie? Fine. I'm so excited because you and I found some common ground in a tip uh, in just our chats that I would love for you to share because you have real-life experience. It isn't just like a theory or some like sounding like a good idea. Um, tell us what you were talking about with your tips and some of the things that uh, you discovered with Picasso while you were um, recovering from an injury. Yeah, recently, you know, being at, not at the barn, I bored my horse, and I wasn't at the barn for many months after my injury. Mm-hmm. And when I did finally go to the barn, I noticed my horse was pushy and, um, like, trying to smell my pockets, getting, just uh-huh. shoving me with his head. And I found out from many of the other people that board there that they were graciously giving him treats and paying him attention because I knew I wasn't there. But they were giving him treats by hand, Mm -hmm. which caused him to try to get them from anybody he saw. So he was pushing me. And I had back injuries, so uh, there's no way I could stand to be pushed. Mm -hmm. So my tip would be never give a horse a treat out of your hand you could just especially someone else's horse you could take it and just throw it in the bin their feed bin or what I do because I still love to give my horse a treat I will give him a treat and pull it way back by the flank so that he has to really flex to get it or take him between the front legs and have him really go down that way just all little so he's really exercising and he's flexing at the same time to earn that treat He's not just shoving me around trying to get it from me. Very good. So you're, uh, there's always a positive happening. Now, so one of the things that um, that I was taught by Dad, Monty, um, is that you should never give treats from the hand. So we're in total agreement there because it does create a bit of a bargy or a nibbly, a nibbly horse. But he Absolutely. does love those flex exercises too. And he sticks pieces of apple on a pole, like a little a lightweight bamboo pole or something where he can get back. So it's not a treat from the human body. They don't, oh, they don't. Oh, that's even better. I yeah, like that. Well, it's good for stretches because then you can, you know, you can get that bamboo way pole to, way in the, uh-huh, yeah, yeah, or between the legs. And, and again, it doesn't come from the human body. So complete agreement with that tip. I love that. And I, I do uh, want to say that everyone at my barn, I'm not, they were gracious enough to oh, care about my horse and to go over there and pay attention to him. So yeah. I'm very happy that they gave him treats and they paid attention to him. I just think that from what I learned from that, that him being pushy because of that, mm-hmm. um, I think it's it's good to let people know that that could be part of an issue for a lot of people. They haven't even thought about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they aren't carnivores and they're not motivated by food, but you can create a bit of that yeah. um, grooming. They, you know, they like to graze all over our bodies once they know there's food in there. <laughs> 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 we don't want any grazing on our bodies. But thank you, thanks again, Judy Limsky, for coming back and sharing your trainer's tip today. Hi, I'm Monty Roberts, and I'm dedicated to training horses without pain. You can learn to do it too on my Equus Online University. Western, English, 
the beginner or the advanced rider. It doesn't matter. You can connect with other students online too, on our forum, and there's a new lesson every week. It's a lifetime of learning for you on my Equus Online University at MontyRoberts.com. What in the wide, wide world of sports is going on here? Where in the world is Monty Roberts? Monty is looking forward to meeting some new friends, two-legged and four-legged, in Camp Verde, Arizona. That's coming right up March 14th. And look for the um, the link right in there because Camp Verde is not quite as high as Flagstaff, so but it's nice and warm still. It's closer to uh, like Scottsdale. So And then he's going to be off to England. That's March 24, 26, and 28. And then, of course, he jumps over the pond, uh, no grass under his feet, and he goes to Hungary. And so he's going to be in Eastern Europe, April 11 and 12. And then back over to Melbourne. Yeah, he's going to go to Australia next. And that'll be April 25, 26, and then April 29 in Shepparton, and then May 2nd and 3rd in Canberra. And you can find it all at MontyRoberts.com. Or if you're the old-fashioned sort, you can call. If you want to get Monty's calendar, you just call 805-688-6288. Or... You can go to MontyRoberts.com, and the phone number's right there, too. That's right. And for details about today's show, you can go to HorsemanshipRadio.com, where we have links to today's guests and photos and more information. And we love to get your feedback. Please follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Monty Roberts, and on Twitter at Twitter.com slash Monty underscore Roberts. Yay. And you can you can never miss an episode of Horsemanship Radio by downloading the Horse Radio Network app for your iPhone or Android. Just go to your app store and search Horse Radio Network. Download it today. It's quick, it's free, and it's easy. It is. It's the best way, too. And many thanks to our sponsors. We heard of one today. Be sure to visit all the other great shows on Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. And until next time, have many happy horse hours. 